Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'm actually not exactly sure I'm still recording. <laughs> oh, there it is. All right, it looks like there's a lot going on. But hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ray Day, and of course, we are going to start taking a look at the brand new goddess, Izanami. Now, before we go anywhere, before we start, a lot of you trying to ask questions, a lot of you want to know who she is, what she does. Let's get this straight. She's an assassin, okay? They were wrong, and she's not a hunter. She's an assassin. I'm just kidding. She is a hunter, and a huntress, actually, and uh, it was pretty funny. Everybody was, everybody got so into that. You know what? This is what happens when you get the high-res tag, and someone is on stream and just makes a post that says, Rain Day official. I didn't officially confirm. I was speculating. Obviously, I didn't know anything, but it's funny. I guess she was a physical goddess, and uh, she's... Looking pretty interesting. An assassin with some of the most interesting abilities I've ever... A, a hunter, excuse me. With the, some of the most interesting hunter abilities I have ever seen. Um, this particularly one. So stay tuned for that. We're going to walk over the abilities, how they work, all of the things that the developers want you to know in terms of what you need to be prepared for in terms of how she works, how her mechanics work. So this will be very in-depth. Uh, but we'll also talk about how I'm looking at building her. Now, obviously, this is speculative. This is based on my knowledge. And we'll cover some things like ability-powered gods and, and um, you know, more early game or late game gods. Where does she fall in? Is she late game? Is she early game? Is she ability-powered? Is she, you know, more of going to be an attack speed, kind of like a Kali-type champion? Uh, excuse me. I'm playing too much Paladins. God. So we'll have to look at that right here. So... Before we get into anything, obviously we're going to cover the abilities and what they do. I will be picking a build so you guys can see this. I got myself to level 20. And don't look at this build. We'll talk about it later. I'm just going to fill it out with a few items that will clearly demonstrate what I want to show in terms of how the abilities work. And uh, we'll build up some stacks on our transcendence while, you know, we're waiting. That way it doesn't take so long. So we'll just go with this for right now. And then we'll move on. We'll talk about this. I may have a couple of things different. A lot of you ask me, what about Poison Star? How do we fulfill, you know, what do we do with that? And then we go ahead and get going. So, moving on into the uh, abilities. Now, uh, Izanami, she is a Japanese Huntress. She is the first Huntress uh, for the Japanese uh, Pantheon, which is very exciting. And she has a very unique mechanic. So, she, instead of throwing uh, just a normal auto attack, she throws... A boomerang, essentially. It's called a comma. It is a Japanese weapon, and it goes forward and back. And yes, it hits on both forwards and back. Now, what makes this interesting and unique is that instead of doing full damage, now you're seeing a lot of crit damage there, but instead of doing full, let's take the crit out just so it's not as confusing to those who may be interested. So we'll, we'll pull the crit out just for a moment and just replace that with, uh, well, let's just replace it with some more lifesteal just for now. Nothing, nothing crazy here. Uh... It deals, in fact, 50% damage on the way out and 50% damage on the way in. So normally, late game, you're seeing 159. It would be more of like 310 that a champion with a, a god with this type of kit would be hitting. Except with Izanami, because she hits twice, she's going to be able to do 50% there and 50% back. She's got a little bit more splash potential in terms of AoE, and we'll talk about what that looks like with Lifesteal. Because as a Lifesteal, building Lifesteal for Izanami, it's going to work with a splash damage effect. So she's going to be able to hit a a, uh, a minion here, and it will do lifesteal in an area. So I have the Hours Glove, and I have Blood Forge, and it will actually lifesteal. I have no life to steal because I'm basically full on health, but it will do it in an area and take 30% of anything around it that it hits. Uh, so if things are clumped up together, it'll take 30% of all those things for lifesteal. Um, obviously, that number will be affected by your um, you know, lifesteal items that you have, but that is pretty much the way it will work. Um, and so you want, you're going to be able to do a pretty good job at stealing and healing up from minions, etc. Uh, when you go into battle with this. Now, the other aspect about this that's very interesting is it will apply on hit effects. Now, what does that mean? It means Frostbound Hammer. Let's look at that. Let's look at Frostbound Hammer. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to take this out because it gives a kind of a weird shield. So Frostbound Hammer. If you don't know the item, physical power and health. Enemies hit your base by hit by your basic attacks, have their movement speed reduced by 30%, and have their attack speed reduced by 15%. So this is what we call an on-hit effect. That passive will apply to anybody you hit with your basic attack after buying this item. Now, Izanami, because she hits twice, is not going to be able to double proc this. She's going to proc this on the first hit. The second hit will do damage, but it will not proc it. So say you want to keep the raw slow, you're going to have to consistently hit him with the first or the second. Now, the thing is, if you miss the first, 
and you hit the second, it will still apply. It just will not apply both times. So does that make sense? You will not be hitting it once and twice. You will have to hit it one time. It will apply, and then your next, essentially, throw will have a chance to apply it again, either on the forwards exit or the uh, entry, you know, kind of into space, or the coming back towards you. Uh, that is where you will be able to apply that type of thing. So hopefully that's understanding. Now, obviously we're looking at our number one. We're looking at our basic attacks. Before we even get into our passive, it's important to understand exactly just how different and dynamic these basic attacks are, kind of the implications. Obviously, when you have a minion wave there, this is going to be very intriguing because you can double tap the minion wave. Um, obviously, in terms of 1v1s too, it's also interesting. And one of the mechanics I think is important to note is that throwing it out there, there's a certain time in free space that these will come back to you. Now, when you are at a wall, Notice how fast they come back when you're here. So if you're happening to be bouncing and fighting someone here, you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck in terms of a quick fix. Now, standing next to the minion wave is also going to allow you to capitalize on that double damage, essentially getting a full basic attack onto every minion at the exact same time. So she can be very good early clear, but it's going to force her to be in front of the minion wave. So to, in order to get the full range, she's got to be right here. And this is a... This is essentially an area where she can get easily poked out, easily hit another champ, uh, another god, and thus start getting the aggro, which is basically the aggression from the minions, and that takes a lot of damage early game. So in many ways, though she has very good early game clear, it's going to be very difficult to access that without being punished um, at least a little bit by a smart uh, counter support or counter hunter in your lane. Now... When we look at the passive, it's called Death Draws High. What this passive does is she, Izanami gains physical penetration for 15% of her health. That is missing, up to a maximum of 20% penetration, not 20% health. She can gain 5 stacks, and she can gain 4 penetration per stack. And that means that every 15%, you'll see, let's have Ra hit me here. Right here down in the, uh, let's take the capsule off, right here, right here, you will be seeing this uh, little katana, I think it's a katana, fan start to get better. As I lose health, this is in telling me that I'm gaining more and more penetration. So now, let's look at an ability. This applies to abilities as well. Um, so what you'll see is, this ability does 371 damage to Ra. Now let's wait and let's get it full and let's see how much damage it does. It's not quite full yet. And remember, you won't have to go to 0%. Just like Bancroft's talent was changed, this has changed as well, so you will actually be able to access your full passive meter right now. Now, let's see what this does. 385. So, yes, I'm not dealing with the most insane power, but you saw the first one is 371. And as you can see, it applies to my abilities as the only thing that changed was my passive. Now, the interesting aspect about this as well is that there's a secondary component on this little meter. And it's right here. So you see on the bottom, there are these little swirls. Now, what do these swirls mean? What does this do? This interacts with her number two ability. We'll get to that in a second, but it is a passive as well and is represented on that meter. So as something to know, something to uh, obviously keep in mind as you are playing this goddess for the first time. Um, so now moving on past that, that's pretty self-explanatory. Again, the, the change I meant for Bancroft's Talon is Bancroft's Talon is an item that allows you to get magical lifesteal and based on how much health, you can't see it here, but based on how much health you don't have. So if you have, um, you can gain up to 100 power based on having, uh, losing 1% of your health. But that meant that you had to be 0% health to gain all of the effects of the item. So they changed that so that you can actually receive the effects of that item. I believe at like 20% or 15%, you can gain all of the effects of having a full Bancroft's talent passive. And that's the same thing here. As you can see, I'm not dead, but I'm gaining the max uh, of my um, penetration. So, let's talk about the number one. So, obviously, she's got these basic attacks. They're very, very strong. And we'll go back into probably the build that I, I am going to be at least starting out with here. I don't think I'm going to be using Frosty Bound Hammer. A lot of people were wondering, Poison Star. Let's throw that in there for fun, and let's see how that works, because it does still have the slow mechanic, and it's crit, and it's a new item, and that's interesting. Although, I probably will be a little bit more interested in Deathbringer um, or Malice, because I, I feel that those two crit items are very solid, very strong. Um, let's look at how she, this number one works. So she's throwing the basic attacks, they come back as a boomerang. Now when I activate my number one, they no longer come back. As you can see, I am no longer getting the boomerang effect, and they are going much faster. So the number one is called Sickle Storm. For six seconds, she will throw her common sickles and become faster and furious. Furiouser. Faster and fit. I guess that's, that's the new one. I, sw I swear they have too many titles for Fast and the Furious, because honestly, it's Fast and Furious is the fastest and the furiousest. And the most furious and the furious are anyways. I got to say, I'm, I, I love all the people who do that. It's a very fun series, but they were starting to run out of titles. I can imagine that just getting ridiculous. 
So her basic attacks will not return her during this, and instead they will apply bonus damage in addition to 100% of her basic attack power. So, remember, initially, she does 50%. There is 50% and back is 50%, right? So 151 plus 151, typically she'll be hitting for 300 if she was a normal hunter. Now she's hitting for 151, 151. As of this, when you hit your number one, she's going to hit for that 300. You guys understand? She's going to hit for that 300. She's going to hit for a full basic attack power because she's not getting the boomerang effect. And she is also going to hit for 25 extra bonus damage. Now, 25 bonus damage, that's not going to do too much. However, what it will do is allow you to uh, go ahead and early on make a, more of a significant impact. So if you're going to be leveling this up first, um, which could be a very decent thing, especially because you'll have the attack speed, it'll potentially help you to clear um, pretty well, especially with the bonus damage, you're going to be able to do a lot of damage to you know early game minions who don't have that huge health pool, be able to work yourself into a uh, lane lead or clear jungle camps a lot faster. Um, and just apply a lot more significant pressure um, at these earlier stages of the game. Because obviously late game, you don't have a ton of use for getting just 25 bonus damage, even though it's, it's not bad. And for every attack, that starts to add up. Hit them with four attacks, that's 100 extra damage you've done in a duel. Um, this is where you also can start to get a, an idea. What is this champion? What is this god? I'm sorry. I, I, I think paladins all day. This is what you get. Uh, what is this god? Is this god uh, a, an ability-based god? Is this god an, an early game god? Or is this god a late game god? And where do you think she fits? Now, I'll give you the answer. Izanami, right now, is typically a late game god. Excuse me. So, you should consider Izanami a late game god. Now, although this has an early game component to it, this will still be very effective late game, especially with attack speed items. And this attack speed buff is a huge steroid that late game, when you're at full build, will really make a huge DPS difference. Damage per second difference, you will really feel that. And this is one of the things that actually lends her towards being very late game. Um, and so that is where we really have seen her shine in play tests. And so you probably should be building her towards that. Very much like Kali, once she gets a few items on... Uh, she gets that Ekavol, she gets those Chinsai, she gets that Fatalis, she really gets going. You know, for Izanami, it's probably going to be a few crit items, a couple, you know, an attack speed item here or there. Maybe Chins, maybe Executioner, um, if you want to build that route. And she's really going to take advantage of this and just be nuts. Um, now, of course, you can build her ability powered or, um, you know, attack speed powered, and that's going to be your choice. And this is going to be a bit of a hybrid build if you're just kind of trying to stray the lines and see where you might want to lean uh, your build a little bit more. So we're talking about that. We've talked about that. Let's talk about her number two. What is it called? What is it called? Spectral Projection. So Spectral Projection, Izanami sends forth a demonic visage, visage of herself to strike down enemies, damaging and slowing enemies in a line. So essentially, it's a damage ability, and it's a slow. Uh, the interesting aspect of it, however, is that it has 90% scaling. You will get 90% of your physical power added onto this, which is a huge amount. This is a lot of physical power being added on. Um, and that right there is a great cue that this goddess can actually work as an ability-powered goddess as well. Now, whether this, I, whether this ability ends up being realistically used and she really realistically um, is built ability-powered is going to be based on how people play her, how the meta shapes up, how she ends up being in terms of survivability, uh, whether she's you know really uh, tricky in certain scenarios, whether she doesn't use this so offensively, but maybe it's more of a, a defensive scenario where she's getting ganked. This is really her only tool to slow people down and get away. Uh, who knows? We don't really know. A lot of the pros come up with crazy stuff, but this is a great sign. If you see an insanely large amount of scaling, uh, you will be able to kind of tell that this, this goddess can really take advantage of having a lot of power in her build and having low cooldowns so these abilities can be used more often. That's what we talk about when we mean ability power. Now, slow, 18% uh, plus 6%. What does this mean? So, uh, obviously it scales up, so the more you level this up, the more you will be able to slow. But as I said, remember this passive? So what happened was, when I got a kill with Raw, I activated the passive of this ability. And it's when you get a kill with this ability active on a target, remember, three seconds, now my passive is full. You increase the slow that this ability does in the future by 6%. So initially, when I hit that Raw, I was an 18, it was an 18% slow. The second time I hit him, it was a 24% slow. And now, 
it's a 30% slow. So it is that much more dramatic and uh, that much more valuable. And that is for the rest of the game, even if I die, which is very important to note. It doesn't reset. You don't have to keep doing this. You get your maximum after two kills by killing someone with this active. So it's not just using it to kill them, although that would do it. It's using it. They have to die while this is active on them. So you throw it on them, and then all of a sudden they die a second after it stops. You know, it, they die on the fourth second instead of the third and the slow is gone you do not fulfill the passive and you don't gain the extra six percent slow so something good to know and to be very very aware of you may want to come in late to fights or late to champions maybe if you can get a kill secure it uh almost without the slow and just use the slow to gain get and basically consider the last hit you're going to be solid um Thank you very much for jumping in, guys. Also, we are doing this live on stream, so all of you guys remember we will do a Q&A section and portion for this if you're uh, sticking around. And I may or may not include that in the video. Probably not, but uh, it may just be some fun stuff for people on stream. So, Fade Away. Fade Away is an ability that is what I think is one of the most interesting abilities we've ever had on a Huntress in Smite. Now, this is my personal opinion, uh, but I am so excited because this gives Izanami the first stealth for a huntress that's right this hunter can stealth and to, to be honest that's probably how i'm gonna market this video because i think that is so enticing and so amazing that izanami can go in stealth so as you can see she dips into the underworld she basically puts herself in a position to uh be untargetable for a moment very much like the hades uh jump under underground <laughs> and can teleport to a distance away now any action that causes damage uh will actually reveal her so if i went and stealth and then hit the odin i would be immediately unstealth now the one action you can take that does not unstealth you obviously you can jump and move uh the other action will do it and we'll see here's the radius it goes about that far that's the max distance it can go which is pretty far and you can go right up onto somebody i mean and they will not know you're here if they damage you they will um if you activate your one i will not be stealth I will not be unstealth. So you can activate your one very much like you have an Alquang who can activate his two. Um, I believe that's called Dragon Call. I believe that's called Dragon Call. He can activate his Dragon Call while he's in stealth. So if you want to set up to kill somebody, you can ambush them, say they're around here, or you want to just be sneaky. Activate your one. Now you start attacking with that huge burst. And they're unsuspecting. You've already got a big advantage on them in the battle and in the fight. So that's just something good to know. And also, just if you escape, remember, if you take any form of damage from a mini or anything like that, you're out of stealth. So very tricky to, I think, get perfect. But, I mean, an amazing potential in terms of ganking, in terms of escapability, in terms of, you know, obviously just being such a unique thing on a hunter that you don't typically see in the smite universe so this is really cool uh loki's having a wet dream about this chick right now uh somewhere we know loki is loving it so a lot of you are saying she's perfect sex change loki uh this is funny it's not loki but it is a huntress who can stealth so the other aspect about this to know is that a, a willix can pull just like she could pull a hades so during that animation while you're underneath a willix can actually use her ultimate gravity surge i believe and pull you so she will actually be countered pretty well by a willish a will a wheelish or a willix i'm going to say a willix for the sake of this video even though it may not be the correct pronunciation however uh you will um and i didn't read the comment actually i just remember from the vod but uh, i'm glad somebody was commenting there uh you can be pulled so again it's a counter and i feel like every single a lot of the champion gods that are made are like countered by a willix like jing wei you know uh i i don't know it's a lot of the new gods are somehow like countered by a willix but it's really cool interesting and uh, of course you know it does have its counters it's not perfect so that's very cool so now to the ultimate what's the cool ultimate thing let's be very straightforward it's called dark portal it is essentially a damage skill shot in a circle it is pretty much just a skill shot in a circle just like this this is the reticle it's quite large in terms of her frame but she's not the biggest let's compare to an odin who's rather tall frame eh, she's relatively small so it is larger than this reticle here and one of the ways to do it i'm not going to do it right now but i just want to let you all know as i do it on the raw you can combo it with your two and to make it a lot easier to land so a lot of people will try to land this and it has a little bit of a delay very much like nox's number two um 
Shadow. Ah, uh, not Shadow Step. Siphon Darkness. Uh, I forget what it's called. Anyways, her number two. Uh, you can actually, it will silence in the middle, and then it will also cause damage. So remember, it silences, so if anyone, um, you can throw this on an area of clumped up teammates and silence them and really put them in a bad spot so they can't use any movement abilities out. Say an Amir Freeze comes up and you want to basically combo off of it, you could throw this down. And even if they get out of the Amir Freeze, um, they're going to still be silenced, not able to use that ability. Of course, if they have Purification Beats, they'll be able to get out of that, and I believe that will allow them to use their ability um, if they use Speeds. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that will allow them to use that ability. So, the way to do it, if you're trying to hit like a just a champion right here who's not CC'd, you can throw your two, and then it's a lot easier to confirm that damage. And look at that burst. It is nuts. This takes 120% scaling from your physical power. 276, I'm getting 331 off of this. This is nuts. This is an insane amount of scaling. This is Loki level scaling for his ultimate. This is what she has on her ultimate. This is the same as uh, the Loki scaling that basically he has for his ult. It is insane. This is going to do a ton of damage. And it's going to be very, very, I think this is why. If this, if if this ult becomes very easy to land, it is going to be, I think, one of the big, biggest keys um, and biggest, I would guess, proponents of building her in a style that is ability powered. So if you have a champion, a god uh, that has such high scaling, you are usually going to be building them ability powered. Now, here's the thing. She has built-in penetration, which is going to mean all these abilities do that much more damage as well. So I think an ability-powered route with, with even going Jotuns, even though that's a little weird, but Transcendence, Titan's Bane, heck yeah. I mean, it's going to do damage. You're going to work. It, it can work. It could be a play style, I think, that is effective. Maybe it's not maximizing her. Maybe it's not pro, but in casuals and the levels we're playing at, I really believe that it can be something that's fun, and you'll be doing a crazy ton of damage. Now, let's say we take out Poison Star. We decided to go for a little bit of uh, Jotun's, and we'll move into the build in just a second. I am now set at 331. I'm taking 348, so that increased my overall damage. It increases my penetration. Now, remember, there is a penetration cap. It is 50, uh, but, of course, that is a flat penetration cap. The percentage penetration is based off the percentage of penetration that they have, and I'm not exactly, I'm not exactly sure... Is it 100%? I'm not exactly sure what the percentage penetration cap. I don't think we're touching it, though. 33% plus 20, 53%. I don't think that would be a cap of the penetration. Um, and I believe it would also be... Gosh, I'm not even remembering my own Smite. I got to watch my own Smite University video about that. If you want to know how penetration works, watch my Smite University video. I, that will explain a lot of it. So anyways, we go into this, and we will essentially... Uh, be doing quite a bit of damage with the two and the four. And if you want to build the ability power, it's fine. You'll have this cooldown back up. Nine seconds, 520 damage to the Odin right now. That is a, that's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. See what it, see what it does to the raw. 412. I don't understand how raw does. It does less damage to raw. Maybe this dude's just tanky. Or maybe it's the level. Oh, it's level one Odin. Got it. That's what it's about. Uh, so again, one. Crap ton of damage. Crap ton of damage. So, again, you can definitely go that route. I think you'll have an enjoyable time. Now, for me, I'm probably not going to go as far as to get Jotun's Wrath in my build. What I will probably do is pick up an item that I find to be very good. Now, we're looking at counters for items, and we're looking at counters for builds. So, a lot of people say, how do you counter build? How do you do this? So, let's, let's look at this really quickly. Um, penetration is a counter for physical protection. So, if I am running physical protection... I want penetration to reduce the amount of protections that they essentially have on my auto attacks. So my penetration is helping my auto attacks to hit without their penetrations having as much of an impact, right? But say a champion builds or a god builds a lot of health and he builds 400 health, he builds all these items with just a ton of health, the way to counter that is with shin size. So we're looking at, again, if they build a lot of physical pen uh, protection, items that give you penetration are going to be very good at countering that. Now, if they give you a lot of health, then items that have chin size is really basically the counter to health because you will be, be doing on hit 4% um, of the target's maximum health. 
which means that the more health they have, the more damage you will be doing. So for people, this is very, very important to understand. Uh, for me, that's probably where I'll be going. And of course, this doesn't have any penetration in terms of actual, um, you know, physical protection penetration. And so you'll be feel very, very fine to early game, either pick up Ikevol here, which is an item I really enjoy. Um, and I believe, let's see how, how fast you can get stacks. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so again, the on hit effects will only apply once. So you will not be able to double dip. You'll have to three, you'll have to hit three of your abilities um, in, the, in individual instances of your basic attack in order to build up Ikival. But early game, say you grab Ikival, which is a great item for early attack speed and physical penetration. And it's also a teeter tartar item, which means if you hit your target, uh, that you're hitting, they will lose 10 power and you'll gain 10 power, essentially a 20 power swing, and that'll happen three times. So essentially, it'll be 120 powers, uh, 120 powers, well, 60 power swing, because they will lose 30, you will gain 30, it'll be a 60 power swing, potentially, um, and that can be very vital early game, but it, it, it's skill dependent, meaning you have to hit your shots. Now, in terms of Aussie, which is another item, say you don't like starting with Devourer's Gauntlets, maybe you want to start with Transcendence. So you say you get out of that and you start with Transcendence. Well, another way might be is to start off with Aussie. After you get Transcendence, um, of course, you'll grab Boots. But Aussie is a great way to get some lifesteal in your build if you don't have Devourer's Glove and you're not interested in that. It's cheap. It's effective. You get 20% attack speed. You get Physical Pen. And you get lifesteal on it. And if you drop below 35% health, you'll gain additional lifesteal. And you'll also be gaining more Pen from your passive Um as you're dropping below those thresholds. So we'll combine for her to make a real nice jump in not only lifesteal, but penetration and power essentially in those duels when she's uh, low because of her your passive, which is going to grant her that. Uh, so this is a very interesting and kind of a, a pretty decent route to roll. Um, and if you want to do it, what you really, I think, you would be benefiting from is dabbling some crit in there. Now, which crit item do you want to go for? Uh, Poison Star is something they talked about. Uh, you get the physical power, you get the critical strike chance, and you get a little bit of a frostbound, uh, you know, aspect to it. Uh, now, I don't mind that. This is a very interesting new item that I don't think the verdict is out on yet. We'll have to see how the SPL takes to it. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, essentially how it works, but this is something that is definitely something that you can use. Now, preferably, I like to go with Rage would be the obvious choice um, if you just want to guarantee a little bit of crit, but I like Malice or Deathbringer because I feel like it allows me to get a little bit more out of my crits. Now, Rage, because you have fast attack speed, you'll be able to build up your Rage stacks relatively quickly which means that you can almost guarantee more crits and now you're not going to get the big ones but when you do get them uh you will you will get more often a little bit of the small ones and that could add more dps for you so with rage uh you know i'm critting a little bit more critting a little bit more right you know check it out critting a little bit more now the aspect of deathbringer and malice is you go for a little bit more bang for your buck um, a little bit more expensive, 600 gold more, 800 gold more, uh, but you get more damage overall. And when you do crit, it's a little bit more effective. And you can see that damage taking off 83 damage, 83. That's another 240 damage that I just got off of this. So pretty nuts. And it's based on how what your crits are. So look at that, 83, 83, 83. I mean, that's a ton of damage, not including the 25 power you're getting. And, uh, of course, the, I believe, 20 health this is taking off, 22 health, because of chin size. That yellow, that's chin size, okay? And that, hmm, does that proc twice? No, it just procs once. Yeah, it's, it just procs once, the 61, 65. So that's pretty much it for Izanami. Now, hopefully this helped you to kind of understand the, the, the goddess. Uh, she is a very late-game god from what we've understood internally with playtests. And also, she is a very... Um, you know, got a goddess that I think it's the verdict is out in terms of whether she's built ability powered or whether she's built full attack speed. I think both routes can go. This is probably a build I'll try out in the near future um, to see how it works and see how it kind of manifests itself with a little bit of crit. You may end up wanting to take, uh, uh, I probably will have, excuse me, Devourer's Gloves in here instead of Aussie. Um, 
to complete my build. Even though it's two stacking items, a little bit, little bit difficult to do if you're not in um, a casual mode. Um, and of course, if you want to not have the two stacking items or you want to go for a little bit more attack speed in here, you can take out Titan's Bane. Um, and you can also potentially just take out one of these items. Maybe you like to go Devourer's Gloves. Maybe you like to go Transcendence. And you can obviously substitute one of those for some more attack speed. Again, if the cheap alternative for this could be, um, you know, going in with Aussie. So that's going to be it for this build. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this. Here at Rain A Gaming, I will be doing some more content. And because of, uh, you know, because of some things, I'll actually announce it next video because I didn't do it at the beginning. And I want to do it at the beginning of the video, but stay tuned. I'll be doing a, a giveaway of sorts. And just as a hint, if you did watch to the end of this, it is going to be on my Twitter. So follow me at Rain A Gaming if you want to be a part of it and stay tuned and check in on the next video to know what it's about. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And let me know your thoughts about Izanami in the future, how you're going to build her. You can say all that in the comment section below so we can have a nice, uh, enjoyable discussion and get to know her and, and what everyone's thoughts are on her very quickly in a very localized spot here on the channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to never give up, never stop gaming. And I'll see you all next time.